what do you expect to see when you look in the mirror? Yourself is probably the most obvious answer, but what specifically are you looking for? Are you looking to check your makeup or are you looking to make sure that your hair looks good? Your outfit looks okay. What are you hoping to see in the reflection? Our outward appearances have a huge impact on us. How we look and dress can reflect a lot of things too. Where we might be going, how we're feeling, what we'll be doing, and things like that. You'd never throw on a ball gown to go watch a baseball game. And you probably won't plan on wearing your pajamas to prom either. You see, with just a short glance at those around us, we can get a pretty good idea of what is going on in their lives on the outside. Now, I want you to take a minute and imagine how your life would change if everything that's going on in the inside of your mind and your heart was also outwardly reflected to those around us. My name is Christy, and in this series, we're really gonna be focusing on who we are in the eyes of God and how we can train ourselves to be more like Jesus every day. This series is called Going for Gold. God doesn't want our minimum efforts. He wants us to be all in, going for the gold medal, his highest standard. All of that starts inside, which is something you can't see through a reflection. It has to start with living in God's values because when we try to live our lives outside of God's values, we're simply living as someone else. Who does God want you to be? Do you know his values? And this week, I want you to remember this one thing. My life will reflect godly values. How many of you have ever had to act nice to someone's face who you truly didn't like very much? Believe me, I know how high school works. So let's see those hands. I've done it. <laughs> now, how many of you have ever heard of someone saying something not so nice about you behind your back? Raise them even higher if you thought that person was kind, was your friend. You see, we're not perfect. It's not easy to like everyone. It's not easy to act nice to everyone. And it's especially to have those good thoughts about everyone. It's in your head. Who cares what you think of someone as long as you're not saying it out loud, right? Well, God cares and you should too because our thoughts become our actions. When we think in our minds, is what truly is in our hearts. When our values don't align with God, it's reflected in how we treat others. When you invite God into your heart, he begins to align your values to his so that you can see the world through his kindness and compassion rather than through the lenses of human nature, which as we all know can be vicious. We all know what it's like to judge others or be judged by them. We all know how easy it is to put worldly things first because Maybe that's what our friends are doing. And we all know what it's like to want to fit in with everyone else so that you don't stand out, so you're not judged. God calls us to things so much higher than we could ever imagine. And when we return to him one day, nothing on earth will matter because it will just be you and the Lord. This requires us to be different from the world and to reflect God's character in ourselves. We should exude his love through our words, actions, and every part of who we are as followers of Jesus. My life will reflect godly values. Say that with me. My life will reflect godly values. I know what you're probably thinking, that's so much easier said than done. It's easy to say that we'll do this, but then we try to start with our actions instead of our hearts. That's when we end up being fake. We show kindness without sincerity, like saying something nice about someone just because we want to sound nice. Then maybe later telling a friend something completely different in confidence. It's easy to be that friend or have those friends because our spirits are in a constant battle between God's will and the world. That's what our Bible story talks about today. Let's open to Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Okay, what are false prophets? Those are exactly what we've been describing. Maybe they are someone in your life who you know have different values than what the Bible tells us to practice. Maybe sometimes we're the false prophets. We come to church, but then we don't make the effort to walk in God's footsteps anywhere else. When it comes to being a follower of Jesus, it means that we're influencing the people around us every single day. You see, we all have influence. You have to decide how you're gonna use that influence. Are you gonna show the people around you what it's like to follow Jesus and produce good fruit in your life, or are you gonna to continue to let the world influence you? Being a follower of Jesus requires us to stand out, to train to be more like Jesus every day. We're going for gold, the eternal prize, heaven, and a relationship with Jesus. That's worth training for. 
Jesus died on the cross so that we could experience that. My life will reflect godly values. Let's say that together. My life will reflect godly values. Let's keep reading. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. You see, Jesus is talking about our character here. If we're living like him and reflecting him into the world, we're going to produce good fruit. We're going to influence the others around us to see what it's like to have a relationship with him. The same is true if we're not influencing others to see Jesus. We're going to produce bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. This is powerful. You can identify people by their actions. There's another verse in the Bible that says they will know we are his followers by our love. When your friends and family look at you, who do you want them to see? Do you want them to see Jesus? My life will reflect godly values. Did you guys know that there are plants in real life that actually trick pollinators? They produce the smell of nectar and lure bees, wasps, and other insects to the plant as a way to spread pollen so that more plants can grow. Orchids are one example. They don't provide any kind of food for insects, but the flowers release smells that mimic nectar to lure the insects in. I think that sometimes as followers of Christ, we're led astray. None of us are perfect and, and only by following God's word and making an effort in our lives can we produce good fruit because God is allowing our hearts to grow like the good trees in the story. But it's also easy to call ourselves followers of Christ and not put in the effort because we think that's enough. You think about the title of this series, Going for Gold. Do you think Olympic athletes could get to the Olympics and, and win if they didn't train and put in effort? Probably not. <laughs> the same is true for us. We have to train daily to be more like Jesus. And as we do, we're going to be able to influence the others around us to see Him through our words and through our actions. Let me ask you, is there one person in your life that you know is not a follower of Jesus? See, you can probably think of a name. Maybe it's a good friend of yours or even someone in your family. Now that you have that person in mind, how are you influencing that person to see what a relationship with God is like? I remember what it's like being in middle school and high school. It's so easy to put on a different mask when you're with your friends. I remember going to school and wanting to hide that I was a follower of Jesus because I didn't want to be different. But how can we influence others in our lives if we're hiding? Good trees produce good fruit. There are no strings attached. Good trees don't produce good fruit to only those people that they like. They don't produce good fruit until they're having a bad day. They just always produce good fruit because they're good trees. Part of being a follower of Jesus is that we're producing good fruit always. We're speaking with words of love, we're acting out of service, we're generous. Others should look at you and how you treat others and know that you're different. Don't hide. Be bold with your faith. But more importantly, focus on that one person in your life. How can your words and actions show them what it's like to follow Jesus? What can you do to share your story of how God has changed you? My life will reflect godly values. Let's say that together. My life will reflect godly values. Our memory verse for this series is a great reminder for us to keep going and learning to be more like Jesus every day. It's a daily struggle and we have to be proactive about it. We have to live our lives in a way that reflects godly values to those around us. Our verse says this, instead train yourself to be godly, 1 Timothy 4, 7. So what are you going to do this week to influence just one person in your life who doesn't have a relationship with God? Don't be passive. Learn to be active with your faith. Learn to reflect who God is in your words and actions constantly. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much that you've given us your words and actions in our heart. Help us to be more like you, to reflect you and exude your love to those around us. Help us to influence that one person in our life who doesn't know you. Help us to show them what a relationship with you looks like and how you can transform our lives radically. And if you want to make Jesus the leader of your life, you can do that with me right now. Just pray this prayer. Dear God, I recognize I've sinned. I've done wrong. I don't want to do that anymore. Come into my heart. Transform me. Help me to be more like you every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Remember, 
find that one person. Figure out how you can influence them so that you can be trained to be more like Jesus. Thank you.